All right, welcome to the fourth and final installment on this series about building a kick drum using operator and other devices native to Ableton Live. In this tutorial, I was gonna just go ahead and do everything, but the tutorial is gonna run way too long. So what I've decided to do is just kind of show you what I did for this first instrument rack, and then go ahead and regroup this and add the final touches to the second group. This rack is fairly complicated as far as mapping is concerned. If you open up here, you can see that the maps, uh, the mapping routing is pretty intense. I mean, not too intense, but what I've done is on the blog, on the website, I went ahead and copied a picture of this. So you can go ahead and manually put these in to get everything just the way I have it here. But the way to do this is you want to first create a new MIDI track, Control Shift T, and then drop an instrument rack inside of there, and then take each instance of your operator that we made in the first three tutorials, and make sure you've titled them, and you can save them, and then if you go to operator, they'll be inside of your presets. So then inside of your uh, instrument rack, you would just take them and drop them into here. Okay, once that's done, you would add some effects and I'm just gonna show you what effects I added to each one of these chains just to save time. And I'm also not gonna do any of the routing. Uh, I have done tutorials before about how to route. So if you need that, I'll leave a link to it on the blog, but essentially you just take, say I wanted to route this volume to the macro knobs over here, I would just right click and write map to macro one, and it would go ahead and map to that macro for me. And then I could adjust this parameter from these knobs without having to get inside the device chains or anything like that. And also these are routable to MIDI devices and things like that, like the APC40. So uh, that's just how you do it. I'm gonna go ahead and walk you through what I did uh, on that first set of macro knobs over here. For the base operator, um, oh, I didn't even do that. I'm going to put the utility on here. And I'm just going to bring the width all the way down to zero because this is a subby end of the kick. And I want that to be nice and centered in my, in my mix. For the noise, I had two auto filters. So if we listen, that's the only sound I want as opposed to this. So it just kind of dulls it out, but still keeps some of the, the higher end of the frequencies in there. If you want to go ahead and try that now, pause the video and then follow along with these parameters here. Essentially, you want to look at what kind of filtering you're doing, what, at what frequency, and the cue. Just bring down the cue. For the mid-range hit, uh, I wanted to cut off the lower end. If you shut off the EQ8, you can hear that it's got a kind of a subby hit to it. So we put an EQ8 on it and just rolled off that sub. We dipped it down right here and kind of raised up that higher end of the spectrum. Okay, and you can drop a saturator on there if you want. You don't need to at this point. We are gonna put a saturator on the end. So that's what I did for that first rack. And then what I did was I went ahead and grouped this into another rack. So if you right click on the title bar here and hit group, it groups it into another rack. The reason why I did this is one, it gives me more macros to control some important things, but I can also add effects to the end of this now, which will affect all three of those devices at once. So if I, I'm going to put a limiter on it, instead of having to duplicate that limiter three times on each one of those chains, I can just put one on the end right here. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, great, and I know that I'm gonna map this gain to macro eight. I like to have my master gain over here always on my devices, so I'm just gonna go ahead and put it at zero for now, maybe make it a red color because it's super important. Oops, and I have that still soloed. Great, and some other effects that I chose to put on here um, for this tutorial, and just for the sake of things, I'm going to be using presets just to keep things moving along. Okay, I'm going to use an EQ8 kick preset. If you come into EQ8 drums, I'm just going to use the kick one, kick EQ1, and put it in front of the limiter. Pretty cool. Uh, also, we can do a mid side on this, and on the side, just make sure we roll off that 
that bottom end so everything is nice and centered in the subby end of the spectrum. And then what I did was mapped the EQ scale to a macro knob. That way we can adjust how much of that EQ is applied to everything. That sounds pretty good. We'll leave it like that. Give it a nice yellow color. The next thing I did was put on a saturator preset called a bit warmer. So if we come down to saturator and here's a bit warmer, I put that after the EQ. Ooh, that's real. So I'm gonna go ahead and take the drive and map that to macro two. And when you map it, it puts it at the lowest value automatically. So maybe put it up around two for now. Great. And the next thing I put on is Restore Punch, just to give it a little bit of compression. And that's under the multiband dynamics. And Restore Punch. So you can hear how tight that sounds. And we might not want it that tight, so what we're going to do is map the amount to Macro 3. That sounds pretty good for, for right now. Okay. So you just need to remember what these are. You can actually rename them by clicking and hitting Control R to rename. And I can put EQ scale. I can put saturate, saturate drive. And I could put Oops, rename, uh, compress amount, looks good. And we also still have four macro knobs open and you can map whatever you want. Uh, for my particular device, I didn't map too much else. I didn't really need it, but you can if you want. Obviously, if something you like I didn't map, you can obviously map it yourself. You can also come in and change the parameters, the minimum and maximum if you wanted to. It's completely up to you. Again, I've covered that in a different tutorial if you want to go ahead and search the blog for it. But that's it. That's the kick. Let's play it with the music to see if it sounds like it should. Sounds pretty good. And for my final device, it's obviously a little bit different just because I spent more time on it uh, before I started making these tutorials. But if you want to download the final result, you can do that on the blog and then compare it to yours or just use mine. I don't care what you do, but uh, that's on the blog. I hope you learned something and we will see you next time.